Why don't you change? What prevents you? But ask that question most seriously and deeply. What's your answer? Why don't you change? What prevents you? You can do anything you want. You are bound by nothing. What are you passionate about? We go through life with our antennas bouncing off one another continuously on ant autopilot with nothing really human required of us. Stop, go, walk here, drive there. All action basically for survival, all communication simply to keep this ant colony buzzing along in an efficient, polite manner. Here's your change. Paper or plastic? Credit or debit? You want catch up with that? I don't want a straw. I want real human moments. I want to see you. I want you to see me. I don't want to give that up. I don't want to be an ant, you know? I did my career on my own terms. And I don't know how many people get to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I think there are too many expectations, there are too many pathways and rules, and, it, and true rebels don't seem a, to be around very much. So what would you say to a 20-year-old then? What would you say uh, I would say do, do what you love, do it well, and if people pat you on the back for it, you got it. The, the right. secret to happiness is finding something you love and doing it well and then being recognized for it. Someone, even if it's one person who says you're doing a great job, or if it's applause, but those three things together. I said to my wife at that time when I changed, I said, you know, even if I only filled coffee houses three days a week for the rest of my life, I'd be happy doing that. And when you let go of goals and stuff, I, I mean the, the attachment to goals, that's when things come to you. You should have a name point, but not a thing like that. Everybody's running around trying to save the planet. Yeah. The planet doesn't need that. The planet will take care of itself. People are selfish, and that's what they're doing, is trying to save the planet for themselves to have a nicer place to live. They don't care about the planet. People think nature is outside of them. They don't take into them the idea that we are part of it. They say, oh, we're going for a nature walk. We're going to the country because we like nature. Nature's in here. And if you're in tune with it, like the Indians, the Hopis especially, the balance of life, the balance, the harmony of nature, if you understand that, you don't overbuild. It's a symphony. Everybody's in the band, you know? It's not just one, it's not just one group. People, are, people want their goodies. They want their toys. Everybody wants the newest gizmo. We're, we're, we're slaves to gizmos and toys. Everybody wants a cell phone that'll make pancakes, and I think that'll make them happy. Yeah. There are places that are going to go. Find your passion and follow it. And if there is anything I have learned in my life, you will not find that passion in things. And you will not find that passion in money. Because the more things and the more money you have, the more you will just look around and use that as the metric, and there will always be someone with more. That passion will be grounded in people. And it will be grounded in the relationships you have with people and what they think of you when your time comes. We are actually soft-wired to actually experience another's plight as if we are experiencing ourselves. But mirror neurons are just the beginning of a whole range of research going on in neuropsychology, and brain research, and in child development that suggests that we are actually soft-wired not for aggression and violence and self-interest and utilitarianism, that we are actually soft-wired for sociability, attachment, as John Bowlby might have said, affection, companionship, and that the first drive is the drive to actually belong.
what we are trying during all these discussions and talks here is to see if we cannot radically bring about a transformation of the mind. Not accept things as they are, but to understand it, to go into it, to examine it, give your heart and your mind with everything that you have to find out, a way of living differently. But that depends on you and not somebody else. Because in this there is no teacher, no pupil, there is no leader, there is no guru, there is no master, no saviour. You yourself are the teacher and the pupil, you are the master, you are the guru, you are the leader. You are everything. And to understand is to transform what is. They are afraid of new ideas. They're loaded with prejudices, not based upon anything in reality, but based on if something is new, I reject it immediately because it's frightening to me. What they do instead is just stay with the familiar. You know, to me, the most beautiful things in all the universe are the most mysterious.